Hello, I am Quinny. Welcome to the channel, guys. In this video today, by popular demand, we have managed to get back on the channel, Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy, thanks a lot for joining us, my man. Thanks for coming back. Thanks, thanks for having me. I, I I did almost hang up when I saw that Paris jersey on you, but <laughs> but I'll stay on. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, it's, it's it's all good, Clover. Eh? But yeah, no, <laughs> thanks a lot for joining me, man. It's it's great to have you back on. Um, yeah. We're also get stuck into some French football last week, where we're talking about Strasbourg and Rennes and all sorts of different stuff. And um, you know, this weekend was great falling on from that in terms of some of the results that we had and some of the games that actually happened and whatnot and we'll, we'll, we'll definitely come and talk about that just before coming on but we're kind of getting into the weeds with uh, Marseille's result of the weekend and how they're shaping up and whatever um and what prompted me to go wait Jeremy let's just go and hit it the now um is probably this the player that I was like wow when I was watching Marseille I was really blown away by unexpectedly was that Harrit he has got like techers, man. He is really, really silky, like always. He's not one of these guys that just, you know, every time he was on the ball, yeah, really eye catching. Is it is you know, what what's the script with him this year? Where's he came from? Such an interesting uh player this season. So he was at uh Schalke Nulfir in, in Germany. Yeah. Uh and, and they got him in and he was straight away heralded as whenever Payet is injured, we're gonna get I mean Harry. So the first three games, he scores once, gives two assists. We see straight away his touches. He's probably the only player in the team who can actually eliminate 1v1 or rather who's who's willing to do it regardless of what the instruction might be from St. Pauli because Marseille likes to play and pass the ball for ages before anything happens, whether he's really provoking and tries to dribble. And then after these first good six, seven games, completely disappeared. One injury, but then... Uh, doesn't make even the team sheet uh, or sits on the bench and doesn't play anymore. And that's right when Sampaoli got a little bit criticised. Uh, and so the fans met with Sampaoli and, and Longoria. And one of the one of the um, complaints, I guess, was how come we're not seeing Amin Harit uh, when he's been so good at the beginning of the season? Uh, and so he was a bit of, you know, he's not in form, he's not in shape or da 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 But next thing you know, the next game, he plays again. Uh, and he plays again back to the level that he was at the beginning, and and he he had a bit of critici criticism against him. Uh, so last time he scored, he he was doing the um, <laughs> holding holding hiding the ears celebration. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you mentioned it. He's he's a very he's a pretty footballer to watch. Uh, he likes to dribble. Doesn't matter where he is on the pitch, he will dribble. I mean, yesterday against Montpellier, uh, is next to his own goal line. Uh, and he's dribbling one player, sneaks between two, uh, does a one-two in his own 18-yard box, and then launches a counter-attack just like that. So he's he's an asset. He can score goals. Uh, he likes to play in small face, but he's also able to to do the occasional long ball. Uh, so he's be, he's been very good. Um, you know, he hasn't played as much as, uh, of course, uh, Payet, but also San Jesunde, or or even on the wings, a guy like Luis Enrique has had more game time than. Harry, surprisingly, uh, but whenever he's played, he's, he hasn't disappointed. And having him in that kind of form for the last few games that are left in Liga uh, is something that the, the Marseille fans and, and that St. Pauli must be happy with. Yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, at the time when the game was on, you know, I was doing my best to try and keep a track of as many different folk as possible. I think uh, Bubakar Kamara was a standout performer in the game as well. And it was a bit of a relief for me because, you know, I, we had a video go where we were just chatting about Marseille on Sunday. And, um, you know, finally they keep a clean sheet. <laughs> you know, finally they uh, <laughs> finally they managed to look resolute defensively. You know, and actually stick to it. And it felt like a really complete performance for the most part. You know, it didn't really feel like anyone was out uh, out of shape necessarily. Um, as in, uh, I seen our boy Gerson uh, do quite well as well. Although his SO five score wasn't actually that great, it must be said. But he looked okay on the ball and and what. He, so yeah, he missed he missed a uh, like he missed an opportunity. He's yeah. by himself in uh -huh. a six yard box. And clearly, he's a left-footed midfielder yeah. because his right foot was pretty shit. He just like the ball bounced up, and he just went to absolutely leather it, didn't he? And he's like reading the headlines already, trying to break a hole in the net, and he just totally scuffs it. And it was yeah, I remember that it was a real um, well. Bubakar Kamara, full disclosure for anybody has who's watched the game as well, uh, was close to to do the worst thing ever in that game. At one point, he's in the corner um, of the defense, and he's trying to pass the ball to Mandanda, and his ball is. Between Mandanda and Gay, four no one. It's basically a pass to Teji Savanier, who yep. somehow misses the target. Uh, but but besides that, um, yeah, he was awesome, and he wasn't supposed to start. Um, Duye Saritacha was supposed to be in central defense and picked up an injury during warm up, 
Um, so Kamara so was supposed to start in midfield, sorry, um, got put back in defense. Um, and yeah, fared extremely well. He's, he's such a smart player. He's able to play the two, the two positions without any issue. He's physical enough to be in defense. And I think Marseille is probably now the best team in Ligue 1 as far as building up from the back and getting out of those little spaces. And Kamara is perfect for this kind of football because he enjoys doing it and he's also able to carry the ball up. Uh, and his, his understanding with Gendouzi and, and Gay is second to none. Um, so yeah, it, that, that's been a, a good performance. They never really looked in trouble. Um, Montpellier was um, only could have opportunity when Gerson loses the ball and gives it to Mavididi and when um, Kamara gives it to Savani. Otherwise, they have zero opportunity. So it was a, it was a well-dominated performance for, for Marseille, for sure. Yeah, big time. And then uh, looking on to the midweek, PAL on the, the Conference League, you know, so that should be a, a, another big night for Marseille. But um, and again, I managed to catch little bits of Strasbourg as well. I didn't get to see as much of them as I wanted, but um, just because I think at that time when Leon was on, there was, uh, I think maybe Leipzig, maybe Man City was on, I can't remember. But um, yeah, decent performance from Strasbourg, man. And like, it's one of those games where, you know, if you were like just looking at Ligue 1 from a distance, you would maybe think, oh, Leon should kind of be having a favourable result in that match. But you know, Dembele had one or two okay chances. I think he had the post with his, you know, off his knee at one point, and you know they looked okay. But like Leon are just not at it, are they? Yeah, Leon. Leon's disappointing at best. Uh, they score at the 90th minute. They're almost lucky to score. I'm not too sure what the Strasbourg defender. I think it's Anthony Cassi who just completely forget uh, to, to defend on that on that one. Uh, but oh sorry, I think it's Luca Pierre actually, uh, who, who forgets to just to just clear the ball at that moment. Uh, but they have the opportunity. Lina almost scores a goal a meter away from uh, Polers Beck. Oh yeah, actually Anthony Lopez got injured during the game. Um, so Julian Polers Beck, the German goalkeeper, uh, is keeping the goals. And I'm yet to read what happened. Uh, but it looked like a knock on the knee for Lopez just when um, Strasbourg scores, and it looked like it's more than a few days. Um, so I don't think. Lopez is playing against West Ham uh, or on the weekend. I think Polar's back is going to be um, tw- twice between the posts. And he's a good he's a good goalkeeper at the, the German he one. He looked okay. He made some good saves. Yeah, he's, he's done well whenever he replaced um, Antonio Lopez. There was a bit of story at the beginning of the season when, um, what's his name, Tata Rusanu went to yeah, Milan yeah. because yeah. he didn't want to be second fiddle to, um, to Lopez. And then they talked about getting Onana from Ajax uh, at Lyon for whenever his injury is suspension was over uh, so I think both Lopez and Polarsbeck actually leveled up to make sure that both was happy and, and we are sending it for Polarsbeck so that's I guess that's maybe a positive for Lyon but that's probably the only positive on a game like this uh, the goal is is a joke like and Dombele and Da Silva and, and Dubois are on the ball before uh, Sissoko can come in we talked about Sissoko last week uh, Sissoko yeah. just sneak in between the two and he's able to score and, and injures Lopez in the meantime but that's just because um, just because Ndombele and Dubois didn't clear that ball that was right in front of them. Uh, so those are those are very costly mistakes, but those are mistakes that Lyon makes week in, week out. Um, Lucas Paqueta, I think, I read a, a stupid stat, something like he lost more than 50% of the ball that were in his feet. Yeah. It's so unlike him. Um, and, and it's just the confidence seems gone and you're wondering what they need to try and put it back. They lost Kakure at that time where it matters. Uh, the most as well because uh, because he's been so good all season uh, and you can see that they're just trying stuff like Tete who just came from Shakhtar starts the game um, Fevris who was starting for the past three weeks is on the bench they get in Jeff Ren Adelaide um, yeah it looks a little bit like um, trying to grasping Astros for uh, for Lyon and they kind of look like they're out of the run for the European Cup now which is which is a big blow for a team like Lyon uh, you know, they need the money, they need the prestige, they need to be able to say they play in Europa League to bring players in. Um, so it, it's not a, you know, getting the one point at the 90th minute smoothed it over a little bit, but it's definitely not a great result. And uh, and they have a few big games coming up to finish the season. They play they play teams that are all kind of fighting for relegation or for that. They, they're playing Marseille um, four games before the end, but they're also playing Clermont, Metz, Bordeaux, uh, all teams that are fighting for survival. I, yes. I don't know. I don't think that they can go through West Ham, although uh, good on them for getting 1-1 back in London. I think they're going to get surprised on Thursday. 
Uh, and after that, I'm afraid of the uh, the psychological impact that that's going to that's going to have on them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because once they once they get knocked out of Europe, that's the season of write off. Then at that point, really, there's nothing else to go for, I suppose. And uh, yeah, well, I say P- Peter Boss has been getting absolutely tanked there all season. You know, like f- from all directions. I thought you know they looked okay at the beginning of the year, but like watching them now, and it's like wow, it's painful. Like it really is. Um, there's not much. And when you get it- a guy like Peter Both, right? He's coming with that um, almost that Cruyff era, you know. I've I've been I've been uh, a coach in uh, Ajax and uh, or in in Holland, sorry, and and I want to bring up uh, the Dutch mindset and the four three three and the total football, and we're going to be attacking, 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 attacking. But none of that happens. Nothing is flawless. Yeah. Nothing is pretty. He has to put a midfielder in defense to find a bit of solidity. He has to play two 19 years old as starting lineup instead of players that have played five times their wage uh, to try and find a bit of consistency. Uh, you know, it's it's a lot of things at once. You know, the sporting director leaving halfway through the season uh, and the president being the greatest French president, but also quite old. Um, so, so it's a lot of things not right at Lyon, but uh, but Peter Bos definitely hasn't helped making those things better. You're mentioning uh, Lance. oh yeah, of course yeah, yeah. Lance against Nice yeah, yeah, that's actually a good game to 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 talk about yeah Lance uh, well you know Nice coached by Galche we we quickly mentioned it yep. last week uh, who was the best defense in the league before the game and he's still the best defense in the league right now uh, but losing three zero away hadn't happened for them in over a year. Uh, only once this season they've considered three goals uh, and, and it was at home. Um, I think it was, uh, I can't remember who against, but anyway, they're not a team that considers a lot of goals, right? They're a team that's coached by uh, Galche, uh, so that's not what they do. Uh, and, and a month ago, everyone was saying after they beat Paris Saint-Germain, they are the one team that can actually, you know, get close to Paris Saint-Germain and next year it's going to be PSG and this. And since that, two draws, two losses, they lose to Marseille. They lose to uh, Lens this weekend. They lose to they draw against Troyes, which is a team that's fight for relegation, and that's a real yeah. surprise. And and I think the probably the worst in that uh, performance is that Lens get a red card at the 17th minute. So Nice plays against 10 men for a whole half, almost doesn't score. The score is zero zero at halftime, and then the second half starts. And Nice concedes three times in 15 minutes, 50, 51st, 56, and, and 67. Uh, and it's so surprising from a team um, that's coached by uh, by Galche. A couple of red cards later, um, Nice is down to nine men. And a guy like Dante, who's, you know, the experience, the guy you're supposed to put the team back together for Nice, gets a red card at the 91st minute when there's nothing left to play, a straight red, so he's not going to be here for the next two games. Um, so, so something, you know, c- clearly broke there. Um, that said, credit where it's due. Uh, Lance, you know, has had ups and downs this season, uh, but they have talent everywhere on the pitch. I mean, uh, the, the the player who scores a, a brace, I think he's the first player since 2005 who scores a brace uh, for Lance while starting from the bench, uh, is Arno Calimwendo, who's, who's on loan from Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, who at the beginning of the season, he didn't know if he could stay in Paris or if he was going to go somewhere else. Uh, and then he decided to go back to Lens, where he was already loaned last year. Uh, and he's just scoring goals after goals. And he's, he's a very young player. Um, they got Frankowski, the former MLS player, who's probably the only Lens player with a Sorer card, okay. I think, um, who, uh, who started the season amazingly, scored a beautiful goal against uh, Marseille uh, Rockets in, in the top corner. And at that time, his price on Sorrell was actually pretty high. Uh, and then and then it stopped having any game time because Klaus started performing really well. Um, and, and now he's back into the, the rotation uh, and he's showing whatever, whatever whatever he can bring. Of course, Seko Fofana, who's been one of the best players in Ligue 1, is in the midfield. And now, yep. uh, Czech Ducouré is seeking a bit more game time uh, and this week, if there's a game that you have, if a goal, sorry, that you have to watch from the weekend, watch the goal that Sheik Ducouré scored uh, against Nice. He's on the edge of the box. He opens up, finds the top right corner. It's just the trajectory of the ball is just perfect. Uh, and, and in front of him, it's it's Walter Benitez, right? It's not a, it's not a shit goalkeeper. Um, so it's, you know, Lance are a team that I, that I really enjoy. You, you got a coach that no one knew two years ago, Frank Ez. Uh, it's a coach that took the club 
two day two match days before the season was interrupted by COVID. Lance were in League 2. He wins the two games that he takes, and then the season is interrupted. He's lucky enough that when the season is interrupted, he's in the top three. So he goes into Ligue 1 the next season, but no one knows yet if he's going to be the right guy for it because they actually haven't yeah. tested him and they, and they still let him play. And the football that he's, um, that he's telling his, his team to play is just that free-flowing offensive football, 3-5-2, the wingers going up and down thanks to him. Close is now a French international. Um, you know, Ganago is looked at in Cameroon. Kalimwendo is considered with France as well. Uh, he's really developed this team um, well. They had a bad December, January. Now, hopefully, uh, they're coming back a little bit. They have a real chance of uh, actually coming back um, for European uh, competition, where at first I thought they were going to be completely gone for it. But now with that win against Nice, uh, they're four points behind Les Aiglons, so they have a they have a shot at it. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a team that is worth watching. I think um, after Marseille, I would say Lens is probably the most... Uh, entertaining team to watch. Uh, they have a few complicated games coming. Next week, is, uh, it's the derby against Lille. Again, a couple of weeks after that, they're going to Paris. Uh, but they're feeling with a bit of a free flow, finishing Nantes, Reims, Troyes, Monaco. Um, so there's a chance that they that they get there. It's, uh, you know, to talk to talk about Sorer a little bit, it's uh, the kind of team that I think everybody was wondering when are they going to go on the platform because a lot of their players are interesting. There's a bit of turnover, but there's a lot of young players and they like yep. to give some game time to young players as well. Big time. And when you look at the squad, like I was just having a glance over it there. Once you get out defence, the whole squad is under 23 basically, except for like one or two of them. You know, Gail Kakuta, 30, Patrick Berg at 24, and there might be more another. But otherwise, midfield and attack is like U23, maybe overall U21. You know, it's a very young team. And even in defence, it's not as if there's... Um, any like out and out veterans, the goalkeeper's twenty four, you know. So it's a very young like kind of team. And when you're talking there, three five two and all that kind of jazz, like yeah, that does sound fun. That might be a, a you know. And I, I didn't actually catch Lons versus Nice, so I'm glad to at least get a wee bit of a, a, an insight into what I missed. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like I I just wrote it off. I thought oh, Nice should do well, and I think there was other stuff on at the time, and I totally missed it. But Nice are definitely like starting to. You know, as you say, the form they're on, the wind is definitely coming out the sails a little bit. And we've kind of seen that before with Nice over the last couple of years uh, under Vieira when it was happening, but they were just further down the table already, you know, so it, yeah, wasn't, sure. it wasn't as much of a kind of problem. But yeah, one, one sounds fun. And Frankowski, like, I, I remember when they signed him, the kind of chat was he was playing left back or whatever, but if it's 3-5-2, I'm guessing he's like the, the left wing back or something maybe. And that's yeah, like, left wing know. back can play yeah. two, both, both, both foot, no issue, both feet, no issue, sorry. Um, so yeah, he's played on the left, he's played on the right, he was on the right this weekend, uh, and nice. he's got the ability to cross, but also the ability to cut back and and, and shoot, so uh, a very complete player, I'm, I'm not sure why at one point he decided to just do hide around the left and close on the right and stop Frankowski, something must have happened on training or something, obviously, but um, yeah. but yeah, he's he's been great whenever I've seen him play, so uh, so yeah, definitely a player to uh, to keep in your little papers. For sure. I think all the all the hype of the weekend went around PSG's emphatic victory over Clermont. You know, Messi a hat trick of assists, Neymar and uh, Mbappe getting hat tricks each. You know, natural goals. It was um, it was a feast of finishing. It was a feast of goals. Um, I wasn't overall impressed myself. I did you know catch them all. <laughs> but it's, it's Clermont. You know, like well, <laughs> it's 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 expected, right? That they win like this. I think the the issue was the issue. I don't know if it's an issue. They they actually played really well, and and Paris this season has been uh, you know has been uh, called the worst Paris Saint Germain under the Qatari era, uh, and yep. and now you you know probably if you know football maybe it's normal, but now that they they won the Ligue 1, kind of they're out of the Champions League, now all of a sudden they're playing that free free football free flowing football open offensive. Uh, the three actually find each other on Neymar, Mbappé and, and Messi. A couple of those goals are, uh, you can see the genius in those players and, and what they can actually bring to a team. Uh, but, but, you know, it's too little too late. Like, you know, where was that when you needed it a couple a couple of weeks ago, one month ago? Uh, and and they, they're happy and they should be happy. Uh, but watching that game, literally all I could think about was, huh, how many of those goals that all those... Um, you know, all those leading goal scorers in the history of football, how many of those goals come into the last 
10 games of a, of a league that you've already won or you have nothing to play anymore because Mbappé is yeah. scoring plethora of goals right now, but it, it, it doesn't matter. He plays against teams that don't play anything, that are yep. way under his level, uh, and he plays against team where he should be scoring plenty of goals. But yeah, he's, he's definitely... Uh, uh, improving his stats, he's back at the head of the goal scoring ladder in France with 20 goals. Uh, and, and Neymar as well, all of a sudden, his stats looks amazing with, uh, with the last couple of games when he's been so bad all season. Uh, so it's interesting. Uh, one, of the, one of the journalists asked Mbappé at the end of the season, um, at the end of the game, sorry, um, who, a, a stupid question Would you stay in Paris Saint Germain to be able to play with Neymar and Messi again? Uh, and, and I kind of liked his answer because he said, Oh, to play with Neymar and Messi. Well, I mean, I've done that now. So I'll see. If I stay, that won't be my main uh, my main motivation. Uh, so he's leaving the door half open, but but I still think, I stick with what I said last week. I think he's gone. Yeah, well, that was the thing that had me laughing about it all, like at the end, but, uh, you know, after the game finished and everything, is everyone's like, oh, I mean, maybe he doesn't go to Real Madrid anymore. And I'm like, see if he does stay at Paris Saint-Germain off the back of this kind of wave of whatever. It's so... Um, it's so flimsy, you know, because yeah. it is like it's not like they've came over some sort of triumph, and then you're like, oh, maybe we can keep doing this. It's like, as you say, there's absolutely nothing on the line, and it is, you know, it's bully boy football, you know, and that's what uh, Neymar loves, you know. Like <laughs> Neymar's got a great it like um, cap to goal ratio for Brazil. It's almost like one and one, and it's like he'll go over there and get a hat against Ecuador and score four against Bolivia, and you know whatever, <laughs> and just rack them up, and then. Anyway, I digress, but I, I always find it, you know, it's, it's futile, you know, it's one of these things, if you're going to go to Real Madrid, you're going to Real Madrid, I think, and to change your mind off the back of this would be childish, to say the least. Now, I'm up to, you know, the football kind of romance of it all, seeing the three of them next year, with another year under their belt, a wee bit more cohesion, give them another chance next year at Champions League, that's kind of tempting, but from a selfish point perspective, I'd rather see Mbappe go to Real Madrid now, and uh, face this Xavi Barcelona and really test himself and like when it matters every week because you're not going to get an easy ride in, in Spain for the title next year or any year really, you know, even though sometimes you'll get, you know, like Real Madrid are nine points ahead or whatever that is at the moment, but still not a foregone conclusion like it yeah. has been in France for the last however long. Both teams are in, are in kind of rebuilt, right? Xavi taking over Barcelona yep. and, and Real Madrid for 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 however good they are doing and however far they are in La Liga, um, they're not a team that's actually impressive. Like every time they get a result, it's almost like, oh yeah, I guess they're not gone. Oh yeah, I guess they're not done. Like you always think that they're too old and then they keep getting the results. Um, so so yeah, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be great for him. I, I think, you know, he, if he wants to say it before the end of the season that he's going to Real Madrid, I think he would have not said it anywhere until the game coming up this weekend, like Paris Saint-Germain playing against Marseille. Um, Le mm-hmm. Classic is so important for the PSG fan. And I don't think that Paris beating Marseille this weekend, which I feel like they're going to do emphatically, uh, I don't think that is going to sort of like make the fans forgive them the the elimination in the Champions League. But I really think that, you know, since that happened, as soon as they digested the loss and the fact that they're not playing, that they probably had a bit of a cross on the calendar, like that's the last game where we have to make our fans happy. And I think Mbappé himself, being such a competitive player, uh, m- must have that in a corner of his head where Marseille is coming to the Parc des Princes. It might be the last time that I play the classic in front of my mates and my family. Uh, I have to yeah. go out there and show them who I, who I am. And, and you know, if he does that well, th- then he can leave and just say, hey, I've done everything I had to do. Sorry that I didn't bring you the Champions League, but everywhere else I was the best. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I definitely fear for Marseille this weekend. I think... Uh, good, on, good on them for beating Montpellier because they bought themselves a cushion. They can lose in Paris and, and no one's going to overtake them. Like Rennes can, can go back at the same level. Uh, but I think Paris is going to, uh, to receive them, um, ready to smash them. Marseille should play, should play defensively this weekend. It's, uh, they'll be well advised not to try and, uh, and get the position ball this time. Especially with Marseille having midweek football as well. PSG obviously don't, you know, so yeah, that's... Fair enough, man. And again, Pochettino, like he's not really getting mentioned anymore for Man United. It doesn't. There's a lot of kind of quiet going on there. I'm really confused with with PSG when all this kind of stuff goes on. Like it's like, oh, Mbappe might stay. There's so much, um, yeah, so much going on with them. 
it's just an absolute basket case. I'm looking forward to after the Marseille game and maybe we'll, we'll get some light and we'll get some light shed upon what will be happening going forward for Mbappe, I suppose, PSG as a whole. Because maybe like that, you, you know, you might get something then fall on in terms of Pochettino will sign on again or, you know, some, they'll come out and back him or whatever it is. I'd be surprised they keep Pochettino. I think he really... Uh... I don't. Who I don't. They, who did they play some with? But really, yeah, I don't think it's his fault at all because yeah. it's a complicated club to work at and and it's a complicated club to manage with all the stars, etc. Um, but but I, yeah, but I'd be surprised if if they keep him unless everybody else changes around him. Um, I don't think those two, Leonardo and El Khalifi, want to uh, want to keep. Or, you know, p- people talk about Zidane like it's Zidane. it's it's a real rumor, but pff, I I think it'd be. It'd be so um, out of character for him to uh, first when the French national team is almost promised to him uh, after the World Cup 2022. Um, I think he'll wait for that. But also, if he goes and play and coaches Paris, um, he's from Marseille. He's born in Marseille, and in Marseille, he's a demigod. Um, so if he does that, he knows that half of the city that he's, you know, revered in and who's like probably there's going to be churches under his name soon enough. Um, the half that city is going to hate him and hate his family. And I don't think he's the kind of guy who likes to have this, you know, his yeah. career his career wasn't made that way. Um, so I think he knows the kind of the passion of, of the Marseille fans. And so he wouldn't want to to breathe out on him. I, I can be wrong. And if I'm proved wrong, it, it'll be great to see him in Ligue 1 um, coaching a team. But uh, but I think he's just waiting for um, for the French national nice. team. So, you know, maybe Diego Simeone could be a guy that could come to to Paris, they need so, they need somebody who's crazy enough and strong enough that is going to come and say, "I I do it my way. I don't care who you are. I don't care about you, Leonardo. I don't care about you, El Khalifi. If I'm the coach, it's my way, and we're going to win." As long as I don't have this, he'll keep being the same shit that we've seen the last five years. Yeah, I see that. that that's just where I, I come to a dead end with it. So who do you replace him with in reality? Because you know they kind of went through them all now at this point, but. Time will tell on that one, I suppose. It's not a club where you can bring like a young up and coming coach who's going to have the the healthy environment to develop himself. You have to bring somebody like when Carlo Ancelotti came, that was the best coach that they've had in Paris because he came in and nobody in the whole club could say, I know more than you do. No one. No one had his knowledge and his experience. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Guardiola, Klopp, Ancelotti and... People like this are the only one that if they come, they can do whatever they want. Anybody else, I feel like, will be just like Tuchel, just like Emery, um, just like Pochettino. Yeah, well, however good they can be somewhere else, in Paris, they'll fail. Jeremy, thanks a lot for coming back on the channel. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me, Quinny. Always, always a pleasure coming in and, uh, and talking about the French football world. <laughs> Cheers, man. Thanks, man. Let's get into all the giveaway stuff before I let you go. I'm still doing monthly giveaways and I'm making it easier to enter. If you want to be entered to win this month's prize or any future giveaways here at the channel, all the same rules will always apply. Hit the subscribe button, you need to be a subscriber to enter, then leave a comment down below. Each month, a random comment from a random video will be selected as the winner, so the more videos you leave a comment on, the better the chance you've got of winning any of my giveaways. All the winners are announced at the end of videos the same way as we're doing here. The best way to keep up with the content has always been to hit the notification bell with all notifications turned on. As always guys, if you've enjoyed the video today, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. On screen there now is some other stuff that I've made that YouTube thinks you might enjoy. Stay out of trouble and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.